All right, our next segment deals with alcohol withdrawal. This segment will explain why alcohol-induced seizures can occur up to 48 hours from the last drink and also the BLS management of a seizing patient. Also in the alcohol withdrawal segment, we will discuss the ALS management of a seizing alcoholic and the need for thiamine in the alcoholic patient. Pop, wake up. Where did he get this beer from? I don't know. He doesn't have drinking. any money. He's been drinking all the time. Alcohol withdrawal is a syndrome that occurs in about one out of 10,000 people. It occurs whenever a person who has habitually used alcohol stops or dramatically reduces their alcohol intake. The severity of the withdrawal symptoms depend on how long and how much the patient has been drinking. Habitual use of alcohol, either in moderation or excess, can lead to withdrawal when the intake is stopped or reduced. Excessive use of alcohol is considered to be the intake of seven to eight pints of beer or one pint of hard liquor per day. The longer a person has been drinking alcohol, the more likely they are to experience withdrawal symptoms. Alcohol withdrawal has been recognized and described in medical literature for hundreds of years. However, the exact psychologic process of withdrawal is still not completely understood. It is generally accepted that alcohol is a central nervous system anesthetic and depressant. A person who consumes alcohol on a regular basis becomes accustomed to these depressant effects. Continuous use of alcohol allows for the body to become accustomed to the elevated blood alcohol levels. When a person stops or reduces their intake, it causes the level of alcohol in the blood to drop. This allows the central nervous system to become excitable due to the now missing depressant effects of the alcohol. The low blood alcohol level will cause an increase in sympathetic nervous system stimuli. It is this increase in sympathetic activity that accounts for most of the symptoms of withdrawal. The symptoms of withdrawal can usually be predicted by when a person has had his last drink and how much alcohol he's consumed on a regular basis. The symptoms of withdrawal are extremely variable and depend on the amount and duration of alcohol usage combined with the individual's tolerance. There are four independent syndromes associated with alcohol withdrawal, tremors, hallucinations, seizures, and delirium tremens. These syndromes typically coexist, so it is more practical to classify withdrawal as mild, moderate, or severe. Mild withdrawal. Symptoms usually start within six to eight hours after a significant decrease in blood alcohol levels, and the symptoms peak and begin to decrease within 24 hours. The hyperalertness, shakiness, and insomnia can last up to two weeks. Mild disorientation to time with no gross confusion, tremors, irritability, headaches, insomnia, sweating, being easily startled, and highly anxious. Moderate withdrawal usually occurs within 24 hours after decreasing the blood alcohol level, but can occur up to eight days later. They include hypertension, tachycardia, nausea and vomiting, and hallucinations. These are usually visual or tactile in nature, i.e. bugs crawling on arms or the typical pink elephants. Severe withdrawal includes seizures and delirium tremens. These can occur as early as two hours after the last drink to as long as 48 to 72 hours after the final drink. 50% will occur between 13 and 24 hours. Symptoms include extreme restlessness, disorientation, insomnia, hallucinations, and death, usually due to associated disorders such as pancreatitis, liver disease, sepsis, or hemorrhage. Hyperthermia, elevated temperatures, and seizures are associated with increased mortality. Seizures usually occur 12 to 24 hours after the blood alcohol level falls. These are sometimes called rum fits or alcoholic epilepsy and are typically grand mal, tonic colonic in nature. Seizures may also occur as a result of related conditions, not necessarily from the withdrawal itself. For example, alcoholics are susceptible to hypomagnesia, low blood levels of magnesium due to their decreased dietary intake, vomiting, diarrhea, and other factors. Hypomagnesia can cause tremors, confusion, and seizures, as well as dysarrhythmias. Also, alcoholics are prone to hypoglycemia, electrolyte imbalance, head injuries, and other conditions that may cause seizures. Delirium tremens, or the DTs, usually occur three to five days after the blood alcohol level falls, within a range of one to 14 days. 
DTs are characterized by significant disorientation, excessive speech, and motor activity. The patient may, however, have brief moments of insight and reality. Mortality from the DTs is reported as somewhere between 5 and 10 percent. When assessing the patient with suspected alcohol withdrawal, a careful history is helpful, although sometimes it's not available. Friends and relatives, if they're available, may be able to help with information about the amount of alcohol use and the decrease in intake. It is extremely important that the pre-hospital care provider attempts to rule out all other possible causes of the patient's symptoms. A rapid glucose evaluation is important, as well as a thorough neurological exam. A search for signs of trauma and infection is also important. Basic life support. Maintain the ABCs. The airway is always a priority. High flow of oxygen and assist ventilation is needed. A thorough patient assessment. Attempt to rule out trauma and monitor and transport to the hospital. Advanced life support. Maintain the ABCs with oxygen and assisting ventilation as required. ECG monitoring, assess blood glucose levels, IV fluids, D50 if indicated by low blood glucose levels, Valium IVIM for actively seizing patients, Thiamine IV. For the last two, refer to local protocols. Thiamine is vitamin B1 and is necessary for carbohydrate metabolism. Without adequate thiamine, the cells of the body cannot utilize most of the energy available in glucose. Most individuals consume adequate amounts of thiamine in their diet. Chronic alcohol intake, however, interferes with the absorption and utilization of thiamine, resulting in deficiency. The brain is most sensitive to thiamine deficiency. Thiamine is used in the treatment of alcohol withdrawal patients to prevent Wernicke's encephalopathy and Korsakoff syndrome. Wernicke's encephalopathy is an acute reversible disorder associated with chronic alcoholism. It is characterized by poor voluntary muscle coordination, eye muscle weakness, and confusion. Korsakoff syndrome is a result of chronic alcoholism. It is characterized by amnesia, disorientation, delusions, and hallucinations. Both disorders are related to thiamine deficiency and the brain's inability to utilize glucose properly. Due to the similarity of both disorders and the difficulty of determining which disorder is present, they are both referred to as Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Pre-hospital administration of thiamine to any patient in suspected alcohol withdrawal prevents complications from a potential thiamine deficiency. The usual dose of thiamine is 50 to 100 mg IV or IM. Please refer to local protocols. When treating any patient in acute withdrawal and experiencing seizures, it is important that the pre-hospital provider maintain an airway and protect the patient from injury and then attempt to rule out other possible causes of seizures. If the seizure does not stop, it may be stopped with IV Valium. Again, refer to local protocols. What's, you know what's wrong, what those seizures are all about? No, no, he's never had one before. Has no, he had any? No. Has he hit his time. head at all recently? Uh -uh. Hadn't been in a car accident? Hadn't been on any kind of accident? Uh -uh. No, just drinking. Okay, D stick is 60. Probably ought to get an IV going. Can you hear me? Okay, his blood sugar was a little low, so what we're doing is we're just starting a route to his veins here so we can give him some sugar. Bring give that one of y'all be an IV pulp for sure. You can hold Let's that. Hold on to that. He can be okay. Oh, probably. need to take him to the hospital though. Once the seizure has been stopped, the physical assessment should search for possible causes of seizures, which include a recent or remote stroke, head trauma, space-occupying lesions as brain tumors or subdural hematomas, 
meningitis, eclampsia of pregnancy, idiopathic or unknown causes, toxins, drugs or withdrawal from drugs, hypoxemia, and hypoglycemia. We've been drinking. We probably ought to give him a little thyme in, too. Pump this up for me. Okay, you got a good vein here. You got the vein guard open. Vein guard's ready. Okay. Okay, you ready? Hang on. Okay, big stick, sir. Okay, give me a line. Alright, here. Give me a little flow on it, please. Okay. Okay, hey, running good. Necessary just for yes, sir. It's still helping him a whole bunch. Okay, pinch off for me. Okay, okay, Thomas on board. I think he's waking up. It is D5, ah. D5. Pop, can you hear me? He's shaking. This is what he was doing yesterday. Okay. Well, that sugar's probably starting to hit him a bit. Pop, how much did you drink? How much you been drinking? Hey, sir, can you hear me? Can you hear me? What's his name? John. Can you hear me? Pop. Can you hear me? What was his name? John. Hey, John? What, what's your name, sir? John. Hey, John, do you know where you are? John, where are you? Do you remember what happened? No? Do you remember passing out? Okay, when's the last time you had a drink, John? You don't know? Well, okay. check your blood pressure, sir. Why does his hand shake like that? He didn't used to do that. Probably did the alcohol. Pop, you all right? Yeah, yeah. You've been drinking, Pop? Pop, you all right? The alcohol withdrawal patient is a challenge to the pre-hospital care provider. It can be a very serious, life-threatening disease if not appropriately assessed and managed by pre-hospital personnel.